so first job of the day today is to make some tapered spaces for um, a hub for a track car. So he sent me a drawing of his sizes and everything that he needs. So it's got to be non-threaded M12 bolt hole and then 14 and a half at the bottom, 26 mil long, 17.1 across the top. So I found some bar, gonna get it in the lathe and then machine it down. So this is the first track rod end spacer made. So I'm just gonna check the sizes now to make sure that it's about perfect. Just needs a little bit more off. Well, I've just walked over to the old workshop and I thought I would show you the two little track rod end cones that I've made for a customer. So they're all done. They're a custom part. Basically, what he wants to do is if I get the original track rod end, he's changed the steering arms on his track car. And where the standard one uses, oops, a like a a ball joint socket like that on a tapered cone, he's going for rose joints. Now the problem with the rose joint is it has a bolt like that that holds it in and not a taper. So he's got to convert the steering arms from a taper on the inside to this diameter there. And that's what these do. So he sent me the, the specs through what he's drew up and I've made these little replicas of it don't really do a lot of machining work like this it's normally just engine machining so it's quite nice doing something a bit different um, now the inside hole this thread measures to be just a, a tad bigger than the shank here I've made these where they've got just a little bit of clearance on the shank but they're a tight fit on there so he's just gonna have to tap them in to get them home but that's that job all done, and I'm gonna now bore some Harley barrels, so I'll record that. So these are the two Harley barrels that have come in for a rebore. Uh, this one's uh, the original barrel. I'm not sure what Harley it's off, I'm not really up on Harley's, but um, Mickey next door said it, he thinks it's off a shovel head. So they're the pistons, but one of the barrels was uh, scrapped, so he supplied a new barrel, which I've got to bore it to the pistons as well. So I'm gonna take some measurements of the pistons, set the boring bar up, set it all up, and we'll get it bored. So the first job I'm gonna do is uh, measure both pistons. The pistons have got the same part number on the box, but I, I never take anything for granted, and I don't recommend anyone watching the channel that's like machining and have got a set of pistons all with the same part number that they don't check each piston because you never know there could be a slight machining problem and um and the skirt be half a thou out well if it's if it's half a thou out it could it could make a big difference 
in the uh, in the in the quality of the finished product. So I measure the piston. I measure it at 90 degrees from the Gudgeon pin bosses and parallel with the Gudgeon pin bosses and then I just slide it down slightly just to see how much it opens up by but I take my measurement from exactly where the Gudgeon pin boss is so that's one done and then I'll just check the second one and then if they're both the same what I'll do is I'll put one of the pistons away because once I've bored and honed it I always like to ch check put the piston in the in the bore and just check it so yeah these are exactly the same they're actually quite nicely machined these are made by a company called storehouse motorcycles or motorcycle storehouse but anyway both pistons measure to be the same so what I'm going to do now is put this one back in the box and then use the first one to do all the bits and bobs off So once I've measured the piston on the Harley, I just make a note of everything. So I put piston size here, and then I write down the clearance here, which the customer's told me what he wants to run, which is three thousandths of an inch. And then I put finish size here, so I know that's my target, basically. So what I do is I'm going to set all the tooling up for uh, three thou below the finish size. I'll set the DTI up for the finish size and then basically it leaves me three thousandths of an inch to hone out the cylinders once I've bored it which will give me enough um, metal in the bore to get the right finish to remove the like the screw style cut from the boring bar and give it the right cross hatch finish. So I've got the first original barrel on the um, on the little boring stand it then uses these two nuts to to lock it down <laughs> and that basically keeps this tight we then flip this boring bent or boring stand over and then mount the boring bar to it and we can bore it so both the harley barrels have been re-bored and now i'm just honing it to size so i'll, uh, I'll film the rest of this bend and i've already taken two thousand or two and a half thou out so all i've got to do now is just uh get it to the perfect size get the right finish on it we'll have a little measure up in here sorry for the noise it's the pump So what I've got to do now is put a slight chamfer on, in fact there's a chamfer already on the bore. This is the new barrel, the uh, original barrel I've already bored, that's in the cleaner. So this is the new barrel which I've bored it to size and now I've just honed it to get it bang on. So I'll take this out of the, the boring stand and uh, get that one in the cleaner as well. I'll show you the finished result. So that's both the Harley Davidson barrels board. That's take 10 thousandths of an inch out of them. Well, it was 10 thou out of this one and it was 12 out of this new one. And then the last thing that I like to do is just make sure the piston feels right in there, which it does. I mean, that's an experience thing to be honest. I think you'll probably find most engine builders or engine machinists can kind of feel what it should feel like but it's all measured up perfectly and then I just like to just double check just by dropping that in. So I can repackage the new barrel into the box, I'll put the new piston away, put it all in the customer's uh, box for him. It's, uh, it's 8 o'clock Saturday night so, well it's not actually, it's half past 7 Saturday night. I've messaged him to say that it's ready if he wants to come and collect it. So it's Tuesday today and we're on a bit of a motorbike roll. Uh, we did the Arlies a couple of days ago and uh, and now I'm doing this off a, I think it's a, an XT, like a classic 
motocross bike. Um, I had to remove the head studs out of it, which took forever. I had to get, get in the barrel really hot and then trying to extract them and whew, no grips would hold them. I'll show you the stud actually. There are the studs, but I couldn't get any grips to, uh, to grab hold of the stud strong enough. Even the proper stud, stud extractors wouldn't hold it um, strong enough. It just kept slipping and stuff. So a little trick that I've discovered, which I always find works really well, is use the vice. So I, I used the big, um, the big bench vise, put the stud in it, gripped it up as much as I could, and then really carefully w wiggled it backwards and forwards, and then everyone went with a massive bang, and, um, and yeah, we got them all out without damaging any. So it took a bit of time, but we got there in the end. So I've mounted the barrel now onto my boring stand. This is still in the Hona from when I did the, um, the Harley Davidson barrels. So I'm just gonna unclamp this, lift it down, stick it where the, I'll switch the heater off, stick it where the heater is and I'll, uh, I'll rebore this and show the process. We've also got to do the cylinder head as well. So I've got to cut the seats and give it a skim. So I'll record all of this. I'll tell you what it is actually, cause I'm not 100% sure. But I'm sure it says on the barrel, on the piston. Yeah, it's a Yamaha, Yamaha XT500. So I'm not actually familiar with what that is, but apparently it's quite a quite a good old school dirt bike. So anyway, we'll get it fixed for him. So on the XT barrel, I'm measuring the piston uh, to get my piston size, and then I'm going to add the clearance to it so I know what my finished bore size is. Um, the clearance for this engine is uh, just shy of 3 thou. So I'm going to bore it to the actual piston size and then leave 3 thou out to, uh, to hone so I get the right finish. So what I've got now is the boring bar mounted to the... So what I've got now is the boring bar mounted to, to, to the boring stand the the barrel is all clamped in here really tight so i'm gonna now self it's all centralized on the cat's paws i've locked it off so i'm going to release the cat's paws now bring the boring bar up and then set the cutter but the first thing to do before i set the the cutter up is to just redress the cutting blade on it it has three angles to it. I don't know if, let me just put it behind something. It has three different angles on this cutting blade here. And uh, obviously the more you use it, it bluntens the tool. So what I do is every four bores is just redress it. Well, that's four bores now. So what we've got is this proper setup tool for dressing them. So we just put the cutting tool in here, nip this thumb screw up, like that. And then on top of the boring bars is this diamond dressing wheel. So with the boring bar plugged in, we'll switch the boring bar on. And then basically what we want to do is these two outer holes first. Doesn't need a lot, just a quick touch across there like that, make sure it's cut nice and true. Then the second outer And then to finish it off the actual cutting angle, so that's the centre hole. And then what I'm looking for on that, because that's the important one, is the width of my cutting blade. I want it where it's just over about a mil, which that is. So 
So what I've got to do now is set that to the right size of the bore. So for doing that, we use the micrometer. So put that back away and we get the setting mic, which is there. Place that in. And then to adjust the setting mic, if I just put my GoPro down, I'll probably show you a bit better like that. Then to adjust the setting micrometer, it has a locking screw in here. So we just undo that. And then with this little tool here, we could just move this threaded adjustment piece in and out, which just changes the size for boring. So the last bore that I did was them Harley barrels and they're quite a big bore so I've got to wind it in and then check what I'm boring it to so 3.442 and then nip it up back it off give it a little wiggle around just to make sure everything's set quite nice and then just really delicately bring the tool back in to give it a measure make sure that we're setting it right so that's absolutely spot on so basically now this is ready to pop into the boring bar and we can carry on with boring it so this xt500 cylinders board and now i've got to hone the last three thousandths of an inch out of it so i put it in the honer clamped it down i've just switched the suds on and let's see how long it takes to get the metal out So that's the bore completely to size. So what I'm gonna do now is just give it like 15, 20 minutes. Although it's pretty cool in this room anyway, what happens when you're, when you're honing, the, uh, 
they point that at me. What happens when you're honing, because it's stone and sort of guide rails, it can generate heat into the bore, which will just cause it to expand slightly. So I'm just gonna let it go back to temperature. I mean, it's nothing, so 10 minutes is fine. And then measure it again. And then what happens is, is on the, the Sun and uh, bore mic, it measures in two points, but it has um, guide rollers. So it measures perfectly accurate. I mean, they're the best you can buy. Oh, I think so anyway. Um, so, but what the balls do, the little ball, they just mark the bore slightly. It's not measurable, there's, there's no damage to the bore, but it just put a little line in it. And it's a little bit of a pet hate that I don't like to see that mark. So the good thing is, is I will just quickly check it and then I'll just blip the honer back, back up and down it a few times just to, to get rid of that mark and give it a wash and then that, that's, that uh, barrel is then done. Which is good. Uh, but what I'm doing now is the cylinder head for it. So I've shot blasted and refaced the valves with a new 45 degree angle. I've already cut the inlet seat and ground that valve in. So what I'm doing now is cutting the, the exhaust seat. And I'm using my Myra for that. So I've already pre-centered the, the seat cutter up. And what I'm gonna do now is just cut this seat. I don't know if we're gonna, yeah, you can just about see the cutter in that. And then just nice and steady, just come down with the, the cutting blade. Just until it puts on the new, the new seat, which is there. And then back it off a few turns, release the Centronic, and um, blow the swarf out of it and then what I'm going to do is just grind that valve into that so when I'm grinding valves in I just use this clover compound carborundum paste and what's good about this is it grinds in and breaks down real quick and gives a real nice finish so you don't need a lot just a tiny little bit on on your finger and then you just spin it all the way around or spin the valve and then you just put a nice little line around them all the way around the valve and then one little tip i've got is when you're grinding valves in to just put some penetrant on the seat and what that does is that just helps everything cut in it helps the carborundum cut into the seat we still grind valves in the old fashioned way and the main reason is that is because you can feel when the seat is actually ground to the valve. You can feel it through the stick and you can hear the paste. So I know when that seat is, is a perfect seat. And then as you're moving it backwards and forwards, you can just lift it off the seat and then go back down. It just picks up a new bit of carver under them and that's what you can hear. And that's it, I know that that's perfect now, but what I'll do is see if uh, I can show you. So on that valve, you can see the ground line from the Comec valve facer, and then you can see a gray line from the carborundum paste, and that gray line goes all the way around the valve. So I know the valve's perfect. And then what you're looking for is the same grey line on the seat all the way around with no breaks, no shiny bits. So then we just look all the way around the seat and that is exactly the same. A perfect continuous grey line. So I know that that seat is perfect to the valve. And the other good thing to check is to bounce the valve. If you just flick it from the bottom, if you see it bounce in the seat, you know it's a perfect seat. So the last thing to do to the cylinder head is to give it a reface, but the head skimmer's over the, the new workshop. And this now is ready for the, just the final quick measure up and then take that off 
I'll deburr the top as well. Um, and then I'll show you the end job. So the last job on the motorbike cylinder head is to give it a reface. So I've put my diamond cutter in, I've got it mounted on the machine ready, and let's see what it looks like. skimmed what I'm going to do now is just quickly deburr it and what I use for deburring is a is an old piston ring and then just send it all the way around the combustion chamber clean all the bits of alley off that does a nice neat job And then with just a normal hole deburrer, just clean out all the stud holes. Just gives it a nice finish. And then this job's done, so I'll go back over the, uh, the other workshop and show you all of it together. So that's all of the um, Yamaha XT500 bits done. This was a spare barrel that he bought that had some damage on it in case we couldn't get the broken, uh, sorry, the, the studs out. All the studs are in here. So it's been rebored. It's actually took all the black paint off it where it's been in the, <clears throat> in the tank for so long, warming up. And then I've refaced the valves, shot blasted the valves cut the seats give it a reface and then there's the new piston that just fits in there perfect so that's all ready for the customer now to collect and uh, it's another good it's another good job done so thanks for watching guys and uh, I'll catch you on the next video